When you hear the Apostle Paul speak about his personal circumstances and his personal learning, it's always sobering because he had difficult times and difficult circumstances and he had to deal with them. And what you have is an Apostle who walks with Christ and who learns from Christ and then he shares his learning with the church through his letters and more. And when you consider him and you consider Christ and Christ's suffering and the suffering of the early church, it's sobering because there's such a disconnect between them and the modern day evangelical church. And not only that, you find that so many in the modern day evangelical church hype everything up into a supermarket where people can just go in and pick and choose whatever they want without any suffering and without any learning and without any self-reflection. And I tell you, it's very sad. When this happens, it draws us away from a deep, life-changing and true relationship with Christ. I saw a video this week on social media. You go to the altar and some woman in this instance drives out the spirit of narcissism. And you fall over and someone waiting behind you catches you. It's all so dramatic. But let me tell you this, it's silly to say the least. Now I might offend you when I say that, but just please hear me out. True believers are filled with the Holy Spirit and cannot have evil spirits cohabitating with them. And now you and I, if we go through this kind of Um, exorcism we can blame the spirit of narcissism for our own self-exalting sin there's just no accountability it's a shortcut out of accountability you know we'd be able to see well you see the, the evil spirit made me do it and the friendly preacher woman drove it out and so if you think about it there is no effort on your part to put in the hard work of changing and learning to rely on christ You cut out the hard work of reflecting on your failure and sin and the pain you've caused others and then seeing the beauty of Christ who takes away your sin. You cut out the discipline of training your spirit, your mind and your body to seek and find Christ and God is the greatest treasure in every circumstance. You shortcut all by taking part in the drive-through consumer church of our modern day. So my question is, when will we learn again that following Christ is a continuous discipline? Not a set of evangelical supermarket moments where we have nothing to give, we just take. And when will we learn that to follow Jesus means to learn new things that do not come easy? When will we learn that Christianity and suffering go together? You cannot remove suffering from Christianity and have Christianity left. When will we learn that we do not need the lights down low and the worship team playing softly in the background for the Holy Spirit to move and to work? Instead, really what we need is the lights on and the blisteringly stark reality of our need for repentance and then the decisions to make that happen by the power of the Holy Spirit. We must learn from the Holy Spirit in the reality, in the day-to-day reality of the life He, God, has placed us in, just like the Apostle Paul did. So let me give you an example from Paul's life. He says the following in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, For I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. He learned that. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hungry, hunger rather, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So you see, Paul's training included times of plenty and times of hunger and times of abundance and need, and times of abounding, and times of being brought low, this so that he may learn to be content in every situation and circumstance, so that he may learn contentment in every circumstance. If you think about that, 
you realize how absurd the present day evangelical church supermarket teaching is on, for example, prosperity. As if God's main concern is that you are wealthy, and as if when you experience poverty, when you are brought low, you are somehow missing out on His blessing that you can claim back. It's absolute nonsense. The blessing is not the Mercedes Benz or the Audi or the BMW. The blessing is learning to be content in every situation, whether one of plenty or one of lack. Contentment and godliness go together. The real wealth, the real gain is not the BMW. It is godliness with contentment. This, in other words, godliness with contentment, you will take with you when you die. But the Mercedes Benz, you will leave behind. That's the point. So please do not miss that a Christian who is not content is still an immature Christian. You see, we pursue godliness. We want to live right. We want to do what Christ has asked us to do. And we might actually be good at that, doing what He's asked us to do. But if we reach a point of godliness without contentment, well, we really don't have much. And the reason why is because contentment for a Christian means that Christ is sufficient for me over and above any circumstance. Christ is my self-sufficiency. And so what I want is godliness, but godliness with a heart which says Christ is sufficient. And all that is required for me on a physical level is that my daily needs be met. I came into this world naked, and naked I will leave. The clothes I wear today and the food I eat today is more than I arrived with. And when I die, I will leave these behind too. So I may pray, Father, please give me this day my daily bread. Please meet my basic needs, the basic needs of my family. And please lead me not into the place of temptation, the place where I love money and things, that I will never be able to take with me. And that will actually, when I seek them, take away my contentment. Father, may I do your will with contentment. May I do your will with contentment. Now in line with this, listen to what the Apostle Paul says to the younger Timothy. He says this in 1 Timothy 6. Verses 6 to 10. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich in fall into temptation, into a snare into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. What a beautiful text. But godliness with contentment is great gain. What do you want to gain in this world? Well, you want to gain godliness with contentment because that is great gain. The modern day Christian supermarket church is not content with Christ alone. This is the problem. And it is ironically drawing believers away from Christ to other things. It adds to Christ things such as wealth and entertainment and the victory over every circumstance instead of the victory in every circumstance. It moves worship into the arena of the professional, not the joyful noise of the broken hearted and the needy who have found their joy in Christ. It purports to provide easy solutions to deep spiritual failure. Let me tell you, there are no easy solutions to your deep spiritual failure. What is needed is restoration, and that involves pain. What is needed is a walk with Christ and discipline and daily reliance on Him to overcome spiritual failure. The modern-day church offers comfort over the necessary suffering. 
It makes the average pastor the Pope. It sells quick fix over messy journey. But I tell you this, you will only find godliness with contentment. You will only find a great gain on the messy journey of sanctification. And the modern day church does all of this while obscuring, hiding our deep need to learn from Christ contentment in every circumstance. Our deep need to find our self-sufficiency in Him alone in every circumstance. Every addition to Christ, every addition, every tale added on to Christ is an abomination. Because our self-sufficiency Contentment is found in Him alone. For in this temporal world, this world that is passing, the only lasting gain is godliness with contentment. Godliness with contentment. I close. Are you prepared to learn from Christ along the path of difficult times and the path of easy times? Are you prepared to learn in both to hold to Christ as your ultimate sufficiency? If you do, you will learn to be content in every circumstance. And together with your godliness, it will be a great and wonderful and glorious gain. May God bless you so. Amen.